Hello everyone. Swift has two kinds of collection types, array and dictionary. An array is an ordered list. For example, uh, this variable array for int contains 2, 3, 4. This is an array of integer and its type is inferred from the value that's being assigned to the variable. Array of string is another array that contains Bob, Steve, John. So this is the array of strings. Note that in Swift, an array can contain data of the same type. So array of string cannot have an integer in it. Here we create an empty array. And because the array is empty, Swift is not able to infer the type of the array. So you have to annotate the array with its type. So this is a representation of string array. A dot count returns the number of items in the array. In this case, A is empty, so it's zero. A dot append will append a new item into the array. Now A dot count is one. If you remember from previous video, um, count elements will count how many letters are there in the string. You can use the same function count elements for array. This will return the same value as A dot count. A dot is empty will tell you if the array is empty. Operators for array. You can use addition sign to concatenate multiple arrays into one array. For example, A is an array and this is another array and they are concatenated and assigned to A. You can also use plus equal sign as a shortcut to do the exactly same thing. An item in an array can be accessed by its index. So A1 returns pair, which is the second item in the array. Be careful though, you don't want to access out of the boundary of the array. For example, A9, that will give you a runtime error because A doesn't have 10 items in it. So 9 is out of the boundary. You can access a range of items in an array by using the range operator. 1 dot 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 3 is a range operator, which means the range of uh, 1, 2, 3, including 3. So this will return pear, banana, and orange. This is another range operator. It means the range of 1, 2, 3, but not including 3. So it will return two items, pear and banana. A dot insert at index function will insert an item at a particular index. So in this example, plum is inserted at the position of 2. So A2 will return plum. Remove at index will remove the item at a certain index. And the, the removed item is returned by this function. And now plum is removed from the array. Remove range is to remove a range of items in the array. So this range of items from 0 to 1, including 1, are removed from the array. Remove last function will remove the last item in the array and return it. You can iterate through every items in the array by doing this. For item in A, then do something with the item. You can also iterate through a subrange of the array like this. For item in A, from 1 to 2, including 2, and then do something with the item. Sometimes when you iterate through every items in the array, you want to know the index for that item. To do that, you can do for index item in enumerate A, and then do something with both the index and the item. Previously, we've seen how to initialize an empty array by annotating the type of the variable. And you can do the exact same thing with this type annotation. These two are same thing. Another way to initialize is doing it like this. This is actually a preferred way to initialize an array because it is more powerful. You can pass over parameters to specify how the array is initialized. In this example, I'm passing count equal to 5 and repeat value equal to negative 1. And this will create an array of five items with each item equal to negative one. 
you can also create multi-dimensional array. In this case, A5 is an array of integer arrays. And I can append an integer array into A5. Now let's talk about the capacity of an array. When you create an array, system allocates a chunk of memory for the array. And when that chunk of memory is filled up, system will create another bigger chunk of memory for the array. So capacity basically is the size of that chunk of memory. Capacity is the maximum number of items that the array can hold before the memory reallocation happens. So for example, A4 has 5 items, so A4.count equal to 5. A4.capacity equal to 6. That means this array can hold 6 items before the memory reallocation happens. So if I do A4 append 2, A4 append 3, the memory reallocation happen here. Now A4.count equal to 7 and A4.capacity equal to 12. So the array can hold five more items before the memory reallocation happens again. So what is memory reallocation? So when memory reallocation happens, it takes three steps. First, another chunk of memory is allocated for the array. Secondly, that all the data are copied from the old memory to the new memory. And thirdly, the old memory is deallocated. So as you see, the memory reallocation is an expensive operation, especially when you have a big array. So if you have a big array, you want to minimize the happening of memory reallocation. There's a function called reserve capacity which helps you to do that. If you have some rough idea of how many items this array will be holding, you can reserve this amount of memory up front so that the memory reallocation will not happen until this amount of items has been added to the array. Remove all function will remove every item in the array and you can also have the option of keep capacity or not. If you say, I want to keep the capacity, the same chunk of memory will still be there for you to use, which is very important if the array will be used to contain a similar amount of data later on, because you can save the cost of deallocating and reallocating the memory. So A dot capacity is still equal to 20. If I say I don't want to keep the capacity, then the capacity will be shrinked to zero. You can do the same thing by using A equal to empty array. This is also deleting all the items and uh, not keep the capacity. So A dot capacity is zero. Note that string also has the concept of capacity. If you know you'll be working with a huge string, you can reserve the capacity up front so that as you add more characters into the string, memory reallocation doesn't happen. You can also have an array of tuples. For example, A7 is an array of tuple of integer and string. So I can create a tuple, my brother, and then append the tuple to A7. And A70 returns a tuple. Array of optionals. A6 is an array of optional integer. Append 3 will automatically wrap the 3 into an optional and then append to A6. A60 returns an optional. You can also have optional of optional. For example, x is an optional of optional integer. And x unwrapped is an optional. And x unwrapped unwrapped is an integer. There's a special kind of array. It's called array of any. This array can contains any types of data. So you can append an integer to it, you can append a string to it, any type you want. Similarly, you have array of any object. So this can contain any objects in it. We'll talk about it later on. That's all for now. Feel free to subscribe to my channel and see you next time.